Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY and to part two of this segmented bowl project. If you haven't watched part one, then I suggest you go back to that one and check it out. To recap so far, I've created a segmented bowl and I've sprayed the outside surface with black iridescent paint to serve as the undercoat to the eventual design. You join me as I'm masking off the pattern with 6mm tape. The look I'm going for is loosely based on a Mondrian style with coloured blocks separated by the masked off black lines. I will be using four colours from the Arteza iridescent paint range, which I will be spraying on with an airbrush. To keep the masking equally spaced out and straight, I use my lathe's 24 position spindle indexing system and a laser level aligned down the centre line of the lathe. The laser level is the cheapest one I could find on Amazon and it did a great job. With the vertical masking taken care of, I then had to mask off the horizontal banding. For this, again, I used the laser level to give me a straight guideline to split it into four equally spaced out regions. Essentially, I was looking for a 24 by 4 grid. Next came the pattern. I used a scalpel to cut the masking tape so I could remove sections to create the different size blocks, which I would be airbrushing. I was working to a pattern, but as I went on this became more of a guide than an actual true representation. Very slowly I worked my way around the bowl, cutting and removing sections of tape to create the Mondrian style blocks. It didn't take very long, though I won't bore you with too much of this. With the final pieces of tape removed, I then had to mask off a large area so I could paint the first colour. I couldn't find an iridescent white, so I had to go with fancy pink, which on the colour chart looked very white with a pink highlight, but this proved not to be the case. I masked off each block separately, trimming the tape down the centre line of the underlying border, being careful not to cut all the way through to the previously applied black paint. Once all the areas were masked off, I could begin spraying the first colour. For me, this is an early attempt at airbrushing, so initially my technique leaves something to be desired, but the more I did, the more I learned, and the better I got at it. In my haste to get started airbrushing, I didn't check the camera angle, but putting that to one side, I airbrushed a total of three coats, leaving about 20 minutes between each coat. Initially, I mixed the paint with flow improver at a ratio of about 60-40, paint being the lesser amount, and an air pressure of about 18 psi. But as I went on, I added less flow improver, about 70-30, flow improver now being the lesser amount, and turn the pressure up to around 24 psi. This gave me better coverage and more consistent results. Mm -hmm. 
After three coats of fancy pink, I unmasked the next areas to be airbrushed, adding more masking to the outer perimeter of each block to catch the overspray. The next colour is fiery red, applied in three coats. I found that whilst it was still wet, the paint looked very patchy, though when I left it to dry it got more consistent and the patchiness went away. And if anyone's wondering, the clips are being replayed at 35 times normal speed. With the red areas done, I removed the masking tape from the next blocks to be airbrushed, once again adding tape to catch the overspray. The next colour to be added was Dreamy Lemon Yellow. By now I was beginning to get a better understanding of how to apply the paint, and I was starting to like the way it was turning out. The lemon yellow needed an extra coat as it was quite transparent. Not that that was a bad thing, I just wanted a more opaque finish. It's the next day and time for the final colour, electric plum purple. I say the last colour, but it was not the end of airbrushing for this project. After I'd finished airbrushing the purple, I noticed the red blocks were still a bit patchy, so I gave them another coat and then I removed all of the masking tape to reveal what I thought would be the final design. The design guide I was following called for some of the blocks to be left uncoloured and to be just left with a black base colour. However, maybe I'm missing the point, but to me these areas just look like I've forgotten to fill them in. I left it overnight, but when I came back to it, it still looked unfinished, so I set about adding colour to the blank areas. Now I didn't film myself doing this, but here is the before and the after. So with the colour airbrushing finally finished, I applied several coats of chestnut acrylic lacquer, which was easy enough as it dries really quickly, and then I just had to part the base off, and it was done. A quick note regarding parting off. I only intended to cut down so far with a parting tool, then stop the lathe and finish the cut with a small handsaw. But what can I say? Good job I had my hand there, just in case. And that's it, another project finished, and it turned out quite nice. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Should I have left the blank areas, or did I do the right thing colouring them in? I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, 
smash that like button and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.